Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together on today. If you know that you serve a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I'll come on and stand on your feet. But we come to worship our Father on today. What a great God we serve, amen. There were so many people that didn't wake up this morning, but God woke us up. There were so many people that had pain in their bodies, hallelujah. There's so many people that were suffering within their mind, that were suffering within their hearts on today. They didn't know whether they were coming or going, but God woke you up. You woke up in peace. You was able to lift up your hands on today. How many of y'all are able to lift up your hands and there is no pain? Hallelujah, there is no pain in your body you are here God has given you a second opportunity to get it right within him God has given you a, se a second opportunity to be able to war on behalf of your family that's something to give God some praise about today hallelujah as we begin to look around on today we begin to see that our brothers and our sisters are here they're here with their hands lifted up on today that is something to give God some praise about that is something to celebrate on today the fact that you survived hallelujah you have survived uh, some difficult things within your life uh, that is something uh, to celebrate on today and so while you are here on today let's celebrate the fact that you have life uh, the fact that you have breath in your body uh, the fact hallelujah that you are a living testimony that is something to give God praise about oh come on and lift up your voices on today as we come to shift uh, this atmosphere as we come to shift this room hallelujah the pressure of life shall not stop us hallelujah the issues of life shall not stop us from getting to our next level from getting to our next season on today and so if i was you i would lift up my voice uh, and i would say god i thank you uh, i thank you that i would not be stopped uh, i thank you that i will not be moved hallelujah no devil in hell shall stop me uh, from pushing forward on today if that is you come on and lift up your voices if you say i will not be moved uh, come on and lift up your voices father god in jesus name uh, i ask that you will reign into this place uh, i ask that you will reign uh, into the hearts of your people oh god i ask that you will help their understanding father i ask oh god whatever heavy thing uh, that is lingering on them today that is lingering on their shoulders will be no more i pray i decree and declare that every mountain that is blocking you will not block you no more hallelujah for you are a child of god for you shall get to the other side for you shall go up into that mountain where god have called you from and in that place you shall find him and so we decree that on today we ask in for the fire of god to come into this place we ask for the anointing of god that will come and break every yoke oh god let your angels come in this place let your angels take us to a new level let your angels take us to a new dimension within you father let your fire rain let the anointing rain let your anointing rain i plead the blood of jesus right now over every demonic force that will come to take over your thought thinking process i break it up now in the name of jesus for you are more than a conqueror you are more than a conqueror you are more than the pain that you have been through you are more than a controlled substance that will try to come and linger over your head you are more than where you have been hallelujah for where you going is better than where you have been and so we decree that over this atmosphere i bind up every spirit of death every spirit of death every spirit of death you have to go i command you to go off of this atmosphere off of the nostrils of man father breathe your life into this place breathe your life activate us on today in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of jezebel that will try to come and control i command you to go now in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of python i command you to go now in the name of jesus for we are freed on today for we are freed on today for we are freed on today they say can these dead bones live yes they shall live and they shall live up to their potential they shall live up to the potential of God in the mighty name of Jesus. For you know the plans that you have for our life. And in those plans, hallelujah, is to bring us into an expected end. 
magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Come on, overcome us. Let's give God some praise this morning. Overcome us. Overcome us. We're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name this morning, God. We give you glory, God, because you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stand at this time for our scripture reading, and it's coming out of Psalms 95. Verses 1 through 7, again, Psalm 95, and it reads as following. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And in his, in his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let us worship, hallelujah, and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Take us a little higher, praise team.
you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. We'll lift you up. We will lift you. Come on, don't stop. We will lift you. We will lift you. Everybody, mothers, could you stand for me if you can, please? If you got the ability to stand.
Come on, lift your hands and open up your mouth and bless God right there. Because he didn't have to do it, but praise him. is in telling somebody else. Come on, right here. Your blessing is in telling somebody else and praise them what I do. Sit there and act like God ain't done nothing for you. 
your mouth, shake yourself, release yourself, and praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Him right there. 
Come on, let your mouth be the instrument. Come on, let your mouth be the instrument. Come on, let your mouth be the instrument. Hey. Cause it was you. It was you. Pulling me through. It was nobody but you. Nobody but you. Pulling me through. One more time, it was nobody but you. Nobody but you. That was pulling me through. Cause I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low. Still could find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. I searched all over. Hey, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Eh, eh, eh. The gates are open. Heavens are open. Do you believe that? That the gates are open. Heavens are open. The gates are open. Heavens are open. The case are open. Heavens are open. The case are open. Heavens are open. The case are open. Yes, they are. Heavens are open. If you believe that the gate is open in your life. Could you just lift your hands? Gates are open. Yeah, heavens are open. Yes, it is. The gates are open. Gates are open. Heavens are open. Heavens are open. Listen, your arms, like this, is a closed gate. I know in church we do this because it looks deep. And it looked like you're holy. When your arms folded across your chest, that means you're closing something out. But if you really want God to meet you right where you are, and for it to really be effective, can we corporately stand to our feet first of all? Because your life in this moment is like an antenna. And you want God to see you right where you are. If you're holding a baby, put him on the seat. But in order for God to see your gate open, I need everybody to just open your heart to say the gate. The gate, the gate. Yeah. Come on, the heavens are open. Come on. Don't be too stubborn. Open up your gate right now. Come on, open up your gate right there. God shouldn't always have to knock. He shouldn't always have to beat on your door. Sometimes you ought to have your gate open. The gates are open. The heavens are open. The gates are open.
that God want us all at. And it's hard for God to get you to that place if you're so closed in. And what has us closed in a lot of times is a lot of trauma that we've gone through. There's a lot of pain that we've gone through. There's a lot of hurt that we've gone through. And there's a lot of lies that we've gone through. But don't nobody know what you've gone through if your gate is just open. We can only judge by what we see. And even still, we all got something. So corporately one time, just open up our gate and ask God to feel you right where you are. He already see you. Ask him to pour. Ask him to pour. Ask him to pour. Come on, ask him to pour. And the gates are open. The gates to your heart is open. The gate to your mind is open. The gate to your spirit is open. The gate is open. Jesus. Amen. I thank God for everyone here in attendance. I thank God for my bishop, Bishop Sion C. Roberts Sr. Please give God a praise for him and his lovely wife and his beautiful granddaughter. Amen. I thank God for my lovely wife, Jennifer. It's my baby. A seven, uh, September 19th, we'll be married for 20 years. 20 years. I will be married to her half my life. Amen. I love her. I love her more than life itself. I thank God for my wonderful kids. I thank God for everyone here in attendance. I even thank God for my cousin making it out. Joy today. Um, please get your Bibles in your hand. I won't be before you long. We have a long day ahead of us. So please get your Bibles in your hand and turn with me to Daniel, the third chapter, and the first verse. Amen. And it reads, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width six cubits. I'm reading from the New King James Version, so it might read uh, different on the, the prompters. He set it up in the plain of Dora 
and in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the, the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So at that time when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, horn, flute, harp, lyre, and symphony with all kinds of music and all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. The 13th verse. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is this true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you're ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not fall down and worship, you shall be cast immediately into the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, O oh God, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O oh king. But if not, let it be known, O oh king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the image which you have set up. Please, on your way to your seat, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I made it out. Come on, if they didn't get happy about that, because some of some of us I didn't live to see 2020. Tell somebody else, neighbor, I made it out. You could be seated. What are you made of? How much are you able to? to withstand? How much are you able to bear? God allows questions like these to be answered in the most untimely moments of our lives. And at the same time pushes us to a place where we never thought we'd be. You never know how strong you are until you're at your wit's end. You never know your limit until you push to your limit. The reason you need to know your limit is because the closer you get to your limit, the closer, the stronger you become. 
Paul says in Romans the 8th chapter, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Paul was given a revelation about suffering, that suffering bring forth glory. If you really want the glory of God, you're going to have to suffer for it. If you really want to be one of God's anointed, you're going to have to suffer. But the problem that I found out uh, that we want our cake and eat it too. We want glory. Uh, we want the ability to perform miracles, signs, and wonders, but don't want to suffer. But can I tell you a secret, beloved? You cannot have glory. You you cannot have you cannot have miracle signs and wonders without suffering because the glory is produced by suffering many of us have great through, gone through great many testimonies and uh, we survived many and great things you don't have to be afraid to tell me your story we survived all kind of things some of us have survived cancer some of us have survived strokes some of us have survived heart attacks some of us have survived diabetes no matter what your testimony is you don't have to be ashamed of it because you are a survivor my bishop always says the church is the only place where you criticize because of what you survive you were to survive a car crash, you would tell it to everybody you know. If you were to survive a plane crash, we wouldn't be able to sit you down because you would tell everybody that you know. God knows if you would survive a gunshot wound, you would tell everybody how God spared your life. You know why the devil don't want you sharing what you went through? Because he knows the power of testimony. The devil realized he's already lost once you got through it. The last thing he wants to do is you help somebody else get through it. Y'all don't want to have no church. The Bible said they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimonies. In other words, it wasn't just Christ dying on the cross that helped them overcome. It was the testimony testimonies of those who went through the same thing you went through to help them get through. Can I encourage you on this Sunday morning don't you shut your mouth. I feel like preaching for nobody. I don't care what you went through. Tell your, more, your testimony everywhere you go. If God delivered you from drugs, shout it from the mountaintop. If he delivered you from gambling Tell everybody if he delivered you from lust and perversion, don't you hide it. You help somebody else get delivered. We get in church and try to act like we perfect and act like we Jesus Christ himself. No, the devil is a liar. I need to know that you struggle with porn. I need to know that you was a whoremonger. I need to know that you was a liar and a thief and a booster so I can get out of it too. No, 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 no. Tell me how God spared you for being an alcoholic. Tell me how God brought you out of drugs, how you was a drug dealer. Tell me. I need the formula. I need the formula too. How did you get out of it? Hi, my name is Kiwin. I used to be a liar. I used to be a schemer. But I had to pray. I had to fast on that thing. I couldn't touch scheming no more. If I wanted to be delivered. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what you've gone through, you are so a survivor. Some of us have survived divorce. Some of us have survived being homeless. Some of us have survived depression. Some of us have survived being lonely. Whatever your testimony is, you're blessed because several have gone through the same thing you went through and didn't make it out. You ought to give God a breath of praise than that because 
because you belong to a distinct group of people who can say, I went through it, but I made it out. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Especially everything we had to go through this decade. You all, even no matter what statistics said, in spite of what the world said, you made it out. 2020 was such a trying year. We had police shootings. We had the pandemic. We had COVID-19. It was such a trying year. COVID-19 came and killed hundreds of thousands. 2021 was just as bad with the economy tripling. And 2022 has started off just as bad with what's going on in the Ukraine. But I came to encourage you today and let you know that you belong to a distinct group of people who can proudly say, I made it out. Some of y'all gotta some of y'all better give God a praise because I know your testimony. Some of y'all show sure enough better give God a praise. Even though COVID came, you still made it. Even though cancer came, you still made it. Even though depression came, you still made it. No matter what, literally, millions didn't make it. But thank God Almighty, you are one of the one. Somebody ought to give. You got breath and britches. You got breath in your body. Give God a praise. You made it out. You made it out. We ain't got much time. Let me get into my text. Here are the three Hebrew boys. And they're in Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar has besieged Jerusalem and taken captive the children of Israel. But his intent wasn't to make them slaves, but to have them to cohabitate with the Babylons. His first order was to mix the vessels. The Bible declares the king commands the master of the eunuchs, Asphanas, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king descendants and some of the nobles. And then King Nebuchadnezzar was very specific. He says he want young men who there is no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand who had the ability to serve in a king's palace. And then he instructed Asphanes to put them on the king's diet because the king saw value in the land he besieged. The king was thinking, why would I waste what I conquered? I could use these children. They're smart, anointed vessels, but first I have to convert them. It's the same way the devil thinks now. I won't destroy them if they can be converted because they have value. I'm telling you, the devil is after you because you possess value. You are anointed. You are powerful. You are smart. And the devil desires to convert you into thinking the way the world thinks. Why do you think we see so much homosexuality on television today? You can't watch one show without seeing a gay character. But the devil is very specific who he wants to convert because it's always black characters. Y'all don't want to have no church. Why do they always link African Americans to homosexuality when we have little or no ties to homosexuality before coming to this land. No, no, no. That was their thing. That was their thing. They was the one. They had all kind of history with homosexuality. It was the Greek. It was the Romans. It was the French. It was the Europeans that all have ties to it. But they mostly put it in our 
shows to convert us so it can subtly convert us. Don't you know your subconscious is 30,000 times more powerful than your conscious? Your subconscious controls 95% of your daily activity. They're not marketing to you. They're marketing to your subconscious. So your subconscious can slowly convert your conscious. But I'm just like Daniel. I will not eat the king's meat. I don't care what's in it. I don't care how good it looks. I will not eat the king's meat. No, you will not convert me. I don't care if I'm in a God forsaken land. You can kill me. You can throw me in prison. 